Prince. Meghan Markle was accused of being a princess before she had any connection to Prince Harry. As a slew of new books have shed purported light on Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's vile behaviour, a source brings to light about Harry and Meghan's Australian tour. Posted on Reddit, the source said, My friend works at Admiralty House and was on staff while Meghan and Harry were on tour in Australia. Sussexes slept in separate rooms and fought almost the entire time. Most of the fighting was about her pregnancy. She had a falling out with Lady Cosgrove due to wanting the entire house to herself, not just a wing. She decided this tour was going to be more of a holiday rock star tour, not a work tour. She was only nice to the good looking or pretty staff. Everyone else was walking on eggshells and spoke down to them. They ended up delegating the jobs involving Smegs, the one she liked. Lady Cosgrove tried to have a word to her about how to treat staff. Megan told her to fuck off. Don't you know who I am? Harry was embarrassed about her behaviour. At that time, Blind Item on Crazy Days and Nights said, Apparently the diva behaviour on a recent trip was nothing compared to the verbally abusive trashing the employee took on that trip when things were not perfect. The employee threatened to sue because of how bad the abuse was, which would have become public. The employee instead was given a check and an apology by the in-laws of the former actress turned abuser. Many people confirm the blind item is true, with one saying, That blind item is so true. I've seen how she treats people when the camera is off on the tour. The pair of them are so icy with each other behind the scenes. I've seen assistants in tears. Let's not forget, Megan described as meanest person I've ever met. Megan bulldozed her way through during a campaign for Canadian women's clothing store, Raitman's, according to an account in Tom Bauer's book. A succession of demands, both during filming for the ad campaign and post-production, left one director so exasperated he denounced her in a Facebook post. According to the book, Jean Malik, one of the directors, posted on Facebook, she's definitely the meanest person I've ever met. Just saying. There were arguments over one commercial filmed in Montreal in March 2016, after Meghan asked for changes to the script through a different director, then acknowledged the Duchess was right. Revenge quotes Meghan saying, Seriously, this doesn't make sense. I'm a brash American, and if my name is going to be on something, I'm going to have my say. On March 14th, the arguments reached their climax, Bauer wrote. After ferocious exchanges, a few script changes were made, only to be rejected by Meghan again. She bulldozed her way through, complained one of the team. No one stood up to her, the book said. That evening, film director John Grammatico emailed the ad agency Tank's creative director. Megan, Grammatico suggested, was not completely wrong. The agency was focusing the commercial on Raitman's label and the dress. Like all stars, Megan wanted the focus to be on herself. She needs to be flattered, he wrote. And she's right, celebrities want to be the hero. The solution was to put Megan in charge because she's beautiful and famous and she's in control. The script was rewritten by Grammatico. The book suggested Meghan complained about the size of a hotel room at the four-star Place d'Armes, which cost around $1,200, and that she be registered under an alias to avoid being photographed. Bauer wrote, Her identity must be kept secret, said her agent Laurie Sale. Meghan doesn't want to be hassled by the hotel staff, other guests or photographers, Bauer wrote. The production team were flummoxed. No one in French-speaking Montreal really knew Meghan. In the event the hotel refused the request, no paparazzi gathered outside the hotel.